Hi everybody, Eden here today. I come to you guys with another book haul because apparently that's all I do. <laughs> I buy books and then I don't read them. So I think this is August book haul part three. I don't know. I'm just guessing at this point because this is getting ridiculous, but let's haul some books. So first of all, this pile, because it's of 12 books, Originally, it was supposed to be 24 books, but 12 of the books I ordered are somewhere around male space. They're gone, they're missing, they're not gonna come, so I'm going to be reimbursed for those books. But since I don't want to wait until like whenever when I'm going to buy book, more books again, which honestly is going to probably be in October or late September. I know myself <laughs> so we're just gonna haul the 12 books I have right now and we're gonna call it quits on the on the August book haul but the first book we have here is Anna Green Gables by Ella Montgomery this is an illustrated classic it's beautiful isn't it and this edition is called Canterbury Classics um, and it's just beautiful and it does have some illustrations in it like in that and as you guys might have noticed like during <laughs> the first half of the year I was really obsessed with Anne Green Gables and the TV show called Anne with an E which they should still renew for season four um but yeah I read the first like five Anne Green Gables books like pretty much back to back and I still need to read the rest of them but I just wanted a really pretty illustrated edition so here it is. I don't think I need to say what this is about because everybody knows. But we just need some beautiful classics in our lives. And then comes a shitload of milk grade because I went there. <laughs> uh, we have Echo Mountain by Lauren Walk. This is actually a signed copy which was really surprising because it definitely didn't say that. So it is signed uh, which is awesome. And this has been a while since I ordered this so I don't really remember anything. <laughs> <clears throat> when the Great Depression takes almost everything they own, Ellie's family is forced to leave their home in town and start over in the untamed forest of nearby Echo Mountain. Ellie has found a welcome freedom and a love of the natural world in her new life on the mountain, but there's little joy even for Ellie. As her family struggles with the aftermath of an accident that has left her father in a coma, an accident unfairly blamed on Ellie. Determined to help her father, Elle will make her way to the top of the mountain in search of the healing secrets of a woman known only as the Hag. But the Hag and the mountain will have many untold stories left to reveal and with them a fresh chance at happiness. So, once again, when I'm rereading the premise of this, I'm really, really intrigued. The next one we have is in middle grade, but it's sort of a historical fiction middle grade. So this is the Black Bird Girls by Anne Blankman. Anne Blankman has written a lot of historical fiction. I do own a lot of them. I just haven't read them yet, but hopefully that will be rectified by the time this video goes up. Um, but this one takes place in the wreckage of Chernobyl, and that's where a friendship starts to bloom. That's all I know. That's all I want to know, honestly. And... Yeah, let's just leave it at that. And we have um, Trinity Brain by Pat by Kat Patrick. We meet 13 year old Frankie and for her life is sometimes harder than it is for the other kids her age. Her therapist might call her neurodivergent but sometimes she just feels just plain weird. She can't stand to be touched, loud noises at her on her edge and she forgets things all the time and she's easily distracted. With all that's going on in her brain it can be hard to make and keep friends but she did have one once. Colette. They match during a tornado in kindergarten, clutching hands on their lunchroom table and has been best friends ever since. Colette understood Frankie and never made her feel bad for being different until the day Colette betrayed Frankie and they were friends anymore. Now Colette is missing and Frankie may have been the last person to see her before she disappeared. Frankie is certain Colette left clues behind for Frankie to follow. Frankie recruits her sister to help and the two must overcome the strains of their own relationship to put the pieces together and find Colette before it's too late. So this sounds really, really cool actually, and really intriguing. It's not really long though, it's about 286 pages. So, quick read. And then we have The Mystic School of Music Craft by Jessica Corey. I love this cover, and I think it has illustrations in it. So, yeah, illustrations. And um, 
in this one we meet Amelia Jones, she's always uh, dreamed of attending the Mystic School, Mystwick School of Music Craft, where the world's most promising musicians learn to create magic. But then she messes up her audition and her dreams come to an abrupt and humiliating end until the, school's, uh, until the school agrees to give her a second chance. Amelia is determined to prove herself, vowing to do whatever it takes to become the perfect musician, even if it means pretending to be someone she isn't. Between a teacher who really dislikes her and a roommate who wants to see her expelled, life at Mistwick is harder than Amelia thought it would be. And it's not even counting the mysterious events that are starting to make the teachers worry. When supernatural powers threaten the school, can Amelia find the courage to be true to herself, save Mistwick and prove once and for all she belongs? I love the premise of this book. It sounds really cool. I'm really intrigued and I really want to read this one soon. But I just counted the books on my TBR and I'm about 300 now. It's never been this bad and I still have an enormous cart on two different book sites. It's not going well people. Then we have Stay by Bobby Pyron. Look at that dog. It's so cute. Um, so in this one we meet Piper and she and her family moves into a homeless shelter and when she does that her life will never be the same. Uh, but then the Hope House, which is the shelter she lives in, brings new challenges and new friendships including Firefly Troop 423 and a sweet dog named Baby. But Baby feels lucky, he gets to live in a park with his person, Jewel, a pack of two. But Jewel isn't well and there's only so much her baby can do to help her. When they're together, Piper and Baby feel like they matter. So when Baby and his person are torn apart, Piper knows she's the only one that can help. But that means learning to trust your new friends and friends before Baby gets taken away for good. So I think there's partially written like in verse. Um, Cause, yeah. Might be just a dog's um, part, I think, maybe. Yeah, it's, it seems to be uh, the dog baby's parts that's written in verse and the rest is written like normal. Um, but it seems like a quick read. love reading about animals, so we'll see when it happens. And then, <clears throat> and then we have A Wish in the Dark by Christina Sontornvat. Sorry, I probably butchered that. Very interesting, beautiful cover. Um, all the light in Shadowana is created by one man, the governor, who appeared after the Great Fire to bring peace and order to the city. Uh, for Pong, who was born in Namun prison, the magical lights represent freedom, and he dreams of the day he will be able to walk among them. But then Pong escapes prison, he realized that the world outside is just as unfair as the one behind bars. Uh, the wealthy dine and dance under bright lights while the poor toil away in darkness. Worst of all, Pong's prison tattoo marks him as a fugitive who can never truly be free. Now we meet Nook, who is the prison warden's perfect daughter, and she's bent on tracking Pong down and restoring her family's good name. But as Nook hunts Pong through the alleys and channels, canals of Shatawana, Shatana, she uncovers secrets that make her question the truth she's always held it dear. So this is supposed to be set in a Thai-inspired fantasy world. And it's supposed to be... Kristana Suntornovat's twist on Victor Hugo's Le Miserable. So that's really interesting. Haven't actually read Le Miserable because that's a chunker and it scares me half to death, but I really do want to read it. Um, but yeah. And then we have My Life as a Potato by Ariane Costner. This book is about Ben Hardy and he believes he's cursed by potatoes and now he's actually being moved to, a, to Idaho where the school mascot is Steve the Spud and he does not see this as a good sign and then he accidentally make the guy that plays the mascot fall and sprain his ankle and then Ben is sentenced to become the mascot for the final basketball games of the year and he does not want other kids to find out he's Steve the Spud because I mean he's the new kid he doesn't want that kind of reputation. But Ben doesn't want to let the team down, so he lies to his friends to keep the embarrassing gig a secret. And no one will find out the fact that he's the guy in the potato suit. Right? So <laughs> that sounds that's going to be really funny. Almost done. Um, so then we have Martin McLean, Middle School Queen. So I don't know a lot about this one, but it's about a Martin McLean and he sort of finds out about drag. And that's something he starts to try out. I think it might be a guy guy romance because he has a crush on a boy named Chris. Um, 
But Martin also discovers that his first ever drag show performance is the same night as the most important Mathlitz tournament of the year. Uh, and that's when he realizes he can't keep it a secret anymore if he wants to be able to do both. Um, but yeah, it's a really short read, so I'm really looking forward to reading this one. And then we have Ghost Squad by Claribel A. Ortega. It is such a short book. Um, and then it says on the back, Be prepared, respect the dead, and always have a cat. So we have the cat in the that wigger basket. We have so many middle grade books have cats on the covers these days, and I'm here for it. And it says, for Lucille Luna, ghosts are more than just the family business. And this book takes place shortly before Halloween. And Lucille and her best friend Sid cast a spell that accidentally awakens malicious spirits, wreaking havoc throughout their hometown of St. Augustine, Florida. Together, they must join forces with Sid's gra witch grandmother, Babette, and her tubby, tabby chunk, to fight the haunting head-on and reverse the curse to save the town and lose Liz, Firefly Spirits before it's too late. I'm in love with this cover and heard great things about this one and I just really really want to read it. Like this should be probably among the higher pedestal among the 304 books on my T-Bird. So make that as if you will. <laughs> And we have the second to last book in this haul and the last middle grade book and this is The Girl in the Witch's Garden by Erin Bowman. There's a cat on the cover, see? And this is the same author I think that wrote those sort of um, uh, western novels a couple of years ago. I don't remember the names of them. Uh, uh, Vengeance Road and Retribution Rails. In this one we meet 12 year old Piper and Mallory Estate is the last place she wants to spend her summer vacation because the grounds are cold, the garden out back is dead and a mysterious group of children called the property home and there's a rumor that Malena and Mal Mallory, the owner of the estate, Piper's, witchy, Piper's wealthy grammar is a witch. But then Piper's father falls ill, Mallory Estate is exactly the place where Piper finds herself and the grand house and its garden hold many secrets, some of which may even help save her father. And Piper will need to believe in herself, her new friends, and in magic if she wants to unlock them before it's too late. Really love this cover. I actually found out about this one from an Outrage Junior box that I saw people unboxing. Sounds really magical and I'm really looking forward to reading this one. We have the last book in this haul, which is not a middle grade. It's a YA fantasy and it's gorgeous, right? Um, so this is Girl Serpent, and, uh, Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Basherdoust. Sorry for butchering that. Um, and it says on the bottom, sometimes the princess is the monster. So what I've heard about this book is that the princess in this book is cursed because of something her mother did. And people can't touch her because she's poisonous to the touch. And she tries to find out a way to, you know, undo the curse. She can actually live a normal life. So she's been shut up. She's been shut in this sort of cell for her entire life and um, wearing sort of um, protective clothes uh, to not hurt anybody and she's tired of that life so she wants to break the curse. Um, so far I've heard mostly great things about this book so I'm really looking forward to reading it. Even though it's snakes on it. I freaking hate snakes. Um, but yeah, this is the last August haul. Admittedly smaller than it was supposed to since 12 books are mysteriously gone but yep um but yeah if you have read any of these books please let me know down below what you thought about them without spoiling it of course and if you have read these books please let me know which one i should start with because now i'm really really intrigued by every single book by rereading the synopsis of them which is probably a problem since I have 300 more. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, please don't forget to give me some thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the button down below. And yeah, hope to see you in the next one. Bye.